In our first story, government has replaced the interception of postal packets and telecommunications messages bill 2016 with a revised one, which according to Deputy Interior Minister James Agalga, addresses concerns raised by a section of Ghanaians. Speaking on news file over the weekend, James Agalga said key modifications, including one that now requires the National Security Coordinator to secure a court warrant before listening in to a conversation, shows how committed government is to addressing the security concerns of the citizenry. Memorandum has changed. People had issues. They said the mem memorandum was not informative enough okay. as to why we are seeking to pass this legislation. Mm. We thought there was some merit in that argument, and so we have revised the memorandum. It's now very extensive, and I mean, if you read the memorandum, you'd understand why it is uh, necessary that we pass this uh, uh, bill into law. So this will say that it is seeking to consolidate all the other Absolute, laws scattered absolutely, abroad. Absolutely. So <laughs> I remember he argued with me on that point. Yes. Okay. And, now, and, now and, tell me and, critically, and, what else has changed? Yes. yes. Um, you, you, you would notice that there was this issue about uh, oral authorization uh -huh. on the part of the uh, coordinator. security coordinator. Mm -hmm. Yes. Uh, we have revised that one too. And so rather than have the coordinator issue oral instructions for interception uh, to be possible, no. I mean, we we'll now have it in the in, in form of no. written. But we wait, 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 wait. Let, let me make the point. Let me finish. Yes. Just a minute. No. So the bill, the bill is mm. here. If we had time. You have it in a written form and then? Yeah, no you court. have it in a written it. form. Yes. Now, the circumstances that would warrant that kind of, I mean, instruction, has been spelled out in the bill. Okay. But we're saying that ordinarily the coordinator would have to go to court and for a judge to give a warrant before interception can be done. What used to be oral without the court order has now changed it to be written. So that without at the end court of the order. day, yes, in, and, and in you extreme can intercept cases, wait. in extreme cases, okay. yes. No. And and no. when you have now done that, I mm. mean you would have to subject the intercepted material to a validation process, mm -hmm. you know, at the instance of what, a judge. What, what other supervisory, you know, responsibilities have you provided? Yes, yeah, I mean, <laughs> some issues were raised about uh, uh, the coordinator's rule, etc. So we have said that, fine, if that is the um, reason why people have problems with the bill, the coordinator should exercise the powers that are, of course, envisaged under the bill, but then in exercise of those powers, he should be answerable to the Minister for the Interior okay. for purposes of accountability. Interesting. Host of News File and a private legal practitioner, Samson Ladi Ayenini, who petitioned the Speaker of Parliament for the amendment to be made to the bill before its passage, remain unconvinced that government had made the necessary inputs to protect the privacy of Ghanaians. What I find is the difference which the spy bill brings, which we are against and I am against, is the situation where there can be an interception without recourse to the court. All the laws we have now, which I appointed the committee to, there are over a dozen laws, there must be recourse to court first before you can intercept. You must have a warrant from the court. But this law seeks to take away that to a certain degree. Now they have said under certain, a certain circumstance where there is need for urgency, urgency, then they can, for 48 hours, there can be the interception without the court. Now, my demand, which I believe is also a demand that many people subscribe to, in short, was that no court, no interception. Okay. No court, no interception. I will say that best practice elsewhere, it is not all the time that a court warrant is required before the interception. Okay. But those places, the systems work. In Ghana, I know for a fact that the systems don't work. So going to pick those laws and come to, you know, transplant them here, there's a difficulty. It is the reason I feel that the, the standard should be that no court, no interception. 
because even in the telecommunications uh, electronic you know communications act. communications act where we give the power to the president for interception the president was required to issue executive instruments the president was required to 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 request the interception by writing so you could not have been looking for the national security coordinator who is an unelected official to do so orally Policy think tank Imani Ghana is blaming the lack of sustainable development on the lack of space for policy innovation. Imani Ghana revealed this at the Leadership Factor Conference organized by the Social Enterprise Transition Africa in partnership with Joy Business here in Accra. The Leadership Factor brought together participants from other African countries to discuss leadership as a catalyst for growth and development on the continent. The executive director of Imani, Franklin Kujo, told Joy Business the trend where politics dominates economic decisions in the country rather than policies is disappointing. In Africa, we tend to have loads and loads of money. Money is not a problem on the continent. It's about the return on the investments or the return on the money. Essentially, what do we use the money for? We've been raising billions uh, of dollars from international markets. Most of the countries that are supposedly doing well. But what do we apply those funds for? The space for policy innovation in itself is not there. So it makes it difficult to see the value addition when these finances, even from within, are supposed to be applied. You see, the challenge in Africa is one of the dominance of the politics over the policy. So we have a situation where political considerations dominate. I, think, I say about 70% of the decisions we make in Africa at the leadership level is heavily tilted towards politics, and it's 70%. Leaving sound policy at 30%. That's the bane of the continent. I think, and that's the bane of the business environment. The discussions that focused on innovative leadership, leadership in entrepreneurship, leading with integrity and excellence. The chief executive officer of Access Human Capital, Dr. Asiansa, also highlighted strong leadership and integrity as success factor for entrepreneurship, which also holds the key to growth in Africa. People throw around, you find it on websites, it's a core value, but then we don't define it. If it's going to be useful, then we have to define what integrity really is referring to. Um, I choose to look at it as honest transparency, right? That gives someone credibility. So when you say something, people can actually believe it and know that, yes, um, you're going to do whatever it is you say. And with, with integrity as a leader, when you ask your people to jump off a cliff, people know there's a good reason why, etc. And with integrity, you've also raised people around you to be able to question, why should we jump off a cliff? Why are you standing on the safe side telling us to jump? But integrity is being honest, being transparent, and building um, an environment and a system where people value those things. So three key things, one, honesty. Honesty to yourself and honesty with other people. Um, transparency. I can be honest and, you know, there's a question asked, I may not answer. That is not transparency. You know, so honesty, transparency, and then consistency. If you are inconsistent, it begins to bore holes into your credibility. And until we begin to define it, if you personalize it, then you can actually track and say, hmm, there's a measure of integrity here. Um, it makes it easier for this person to be credible if he says, let's mobilize citizens, let's move, let's act, let's, you know, do whatever we need to do for our own progress. People will be mobilized because there's credibility. You know, so I think absolutely integrity is key, but we have to define it. Otherwise, it's just fluffy, sexy words for websites and that's it. The Leadership Factor Conference provided an opportunity for the audience to engage the speakers who have made tremendous strides through exemplary leadership in various fields and share a vision of transforming societies. Senior citizens in the Upper West Region are calling for the codification of the country's customary laws uh, defied to or identified to enable chiefs in the country have power to deal with issues of theft and several other vices plaguing society. 
Well, speaking at the 59th Republic Day celebration in Wa, the senior citizens argued the need for a codified customary law in order to grant chiefs the powers to rid society of deviant characters. Rafik Salam has been reporting from Wa. Republic Day, which is also termed as the Senior Citizens Day, is marked every year to celebrate senior citizens for their contribution towards the socio-economic development of the country. Some former government appointees in the Third and Fourth Republic in the Upper West Region joined retired public and civil servants to dine and wine with their colleagues. They were also given opportunity to offer suggestions to help build the walls of the foundation they have laid for the country. If customary law is same as what we know as conventional law, what of if our chief would codify the customary laws of this region, tribe by tribe? I don't know whether this has already been done because years back it was said they should codify these customary laws. When we do so, the crime will and many other things I think will be abated. Our youngsters are cultivating weed in the farms. It is not a taboo for anybody to grow anything that is not allowed by culture. That is an example. So please, may the chiefs be told that we want to see their codified customary laws so that we can follow and make sure that we are true our witness. All those who are here, they are people who have helped to bring Ghana to this day, as you mentioned in your speech. Secondly, you should use all of them to advise you and get the development that you need for the region. The rest of my colleagues, you should be prepared to help your district utilities in every district where you are. Don't become an antagonist uh, uh, citizen against the BC or against the AP. Upper West Regional Minister Amin Amir Suleimani implored on the senior citizens to use their influence to convince political actors to be tolerant and avoid unsavory remarks in order to have the needed peace even before, during, and after the elections. Our neighbors, Burkina Faso, the Yom Mali, there, is, there are still some security problems there. La Cour du Roi has just come out of it. Togo has just come out of it. In the event that we are destabilized, as a result of our own actions and inactions as citizens, we we'll have nowhere to go. The only border available to us is the sea. And even those in Accra, how many of them can swim? Let those of you living in the desert, how many of you see across? Why are you swimming in any case? The senior citizens later dance their hearts out after they were treated to good music. Reporting for the news, Rafik Salam. Wow. <laughs> well, the senior citizens enjoying themselves then. But let's look at uh, this other uh, subject, and uh, it's about religion. And we know on Wednesday, July 6, Muslims across the country will mark the end of the month of Ramadan with a celebration of Eid al-Fitr, with barely 20, 48 hours the return to normalcy for many who have over the past six months endured a 6-6 six six fasting period. Well, not all seem keen on breaking the 30-day fast. Join News' Safia Mutala has been finding out why in the following report. Starving oneself of a basic necessity such as food may not be the easiest tax one would wish for. But for Muslims all over the world, this happens to be a worthwhile sacrifice that needs to be undertaken. Why? So as to develop a higher level of spiritual consciousness. For 30 days, the month of Ramadan is observed across the world with acts of humility, compassion and community bonding among members of the Islamic faith. Meet Hajia, a lady in her 30s who after 12 hours without food decides to prepare and distribute free meals to other Muslims at Nima, a suburb of the greater Accra region of Ghana. For her, 
Seeing the smiles on the faces of the many people who choose to break their fast with her is a spectacle she wishes will remain even after Ramadan. Do Ramadan, you see, this is where we are. And we prepare tea for people to come and take, to break their fast. So that's what I will miss because I will see those people again. My prayers is, I wish God to permit me to see next year Ramadan like this. Many will be sad to see the month of Ramadan pass by, especially sellers who make a bounty after attending to the needs of the many who require food after a 12-hour fast. Most of them come here to buy the kose because it's special. My kose is one in town. The only kose the national chief imam tastes. So, very good. Very good, despite the fact that the rate of items have increased. The act of sharing is one of the characteristics of Ramadan. And during Ramadan, here at the residence of the National Chief Imam, foods are prepared and given out freely, irrespective of where you come from. On Wednesday, Muslims in Ghana will mark the end of the fasting period by making merry as they celebrate Eid al-Fitr. But what lessons are learned in the month of Ramadan prior to making merry? Such a, a special moment. Um, and when it's coming, we are hesitant. But when it's going, we are also apprehensive. Because there's so much blessing inside this uh, holy month in terms of as the Ummah. It brings us so much together. And then there's that community, that fraternity, and for our sisters too, sorority. Uh, and it, it makes you closer to Allah. And I think even within the communities in which we live, it makes you work more than normal. So as we bid for a Ramadan farewell, uh, we are already missing Ramadan, especially the communal uh, and socialization aspect of uh, Ramadan. Sometimes I forget to even go home uh -huh, because I've made new friends here and uh, my concentration uh, this time around is, yes, take care of the family, leave them at home and then concentrate on uh, seeking the pleasure of Allah. So I would miss the entire month, uh, especially for me, uh, I mean, your suhoor and then iftar. Mm. Who knows, a revision to the Islamic calendar may be needed after all, as we strive towards raising tomorrow's leaders the right way. For Joy News, Safia Murtala reporting. Do you fast? Uh, we all will be joining our Muslim brothers and sisters as they mark the end of the fasting or Ramadan, as they mark Eid al-Fitr. And uh, we know that we'll be waiting 40 days later for the big feast. That's what I'm always looking forward to. But it's a great time uh, to be religious. But that'll be it for the news this morning. As always, you want to get very much interactive, please, you have the chance to do so on Facebook. We have a page there, join us on TV. Right now, we're streaming live on our YouTube channel through the page, My Joy Online. You get there, you get to watch us a lot more. And please make sure you search the name on YouTube, the channel's name is My Joy Online, and uh, please, uh, we're streaming live. Right now, we'll have to take a break. When we come back, we'll be looking at what stories there are, front, back pages of the newspapers, and then we'll also touch base with uh, a lot more of the profiles of news portals we can find around. We're taking a break. We'll be right back. <music> Thank you.